For this video, I want to talk about the new show that's airing on NBC, uh, Hannibal. Of course, it deals with uh, the psychiatrist, Dr. Hannibal Lecter, uh, and special agent for, for the FBI, Will Graham. Um, now, this is a very funny show. Uh, it's a half-hour sitcom. They get an apartment together, and kind of like all their, their uh, misunderstandings and, and their rivalries. Uh, Will Graham, he's kind of the more strung-up character. He's easily agitated, and, you know, he's, he's very uh, high-maintenance and, and quirky. And uh, Hannibal Lecter, he's more laid-back and more easygoing, new age. Um, and he runs his uh, practice out of the apartment, so... All these funny characters and these these psychiatric patients uh, they are coming in and out, and there's all these funny misunderstandings and stuff. And of course, Hannibal's always uh, cooking and stinking up the apartment, and it gets on Will's nerves. So it's very funny. Um, think uh, the Odd Couple meets Frasier. So it's a very good show. Uh, great network uh, television uh, programming. And I'm I'm just kidding, <laughs> uh, obviously. Um, it's really, of course, based on the Thomas Harris novels. Um, particularly Red Dragon, because it does deal with Hannibal and Will Graham, and, and their kind of, I don't want to say partnership, but their, their relationship together, and how they uh, kind of play off each other when it comes to solving uh, sort of these murder mysteries, I guess. Um, and it's it's not directly uh, Red Dragon, because of course, by the time Red Dragon starts, it's, you know, Lecter is in jail, so it takes place a little bit before that. It takes liberties with this story, of course, um, which I like, because that's something that was kind of always passed over when we saw the movies. Uh, Hannibal Lecter is either in jail already, uh, or, you know, they show, in, in the movie Red Dragon, they show just like a really, really brief um, opening scene, and we get an idea of what the relationship could would have been like. Um, but here it allows that to... Uh, give some breathing room, which I thought was, is an interesting move for the show. It's probably going to move a little bit forward. Um, I don't know how this season is going to end, which is which is cool. Like, it's based on television. Uh, it's based on a, a novel, but you don't really know where it's going to go. Uh, they could keep going with it, it with just as it is right now. Um, so it's, it's, it's unpredictable in that sense, which I find interesting, um, which, you know, keeps me to, to coming to watch it. Uh, I had heard good things, but I didn't catch it from when it first started airing, which is a mistake. I really should have started watching it. Um, so I've been catching up with the episodes, and it's just a really, it's an excellent show. Um, especially for just, you know, a basic cable network show. Uh, very, very tense and involving. Great characterization. Um, it's pretty frightening in, in some aspects, too. Um, but it's it, it works really well, more than I was expecting it to, which is kind of why I was avoiding it a little bit at first. But where it really shines is in the characters themselves. Now, Will Graham, uh, he's kind of... When it comes to what we know of the Thomas Harris adaptations, he's always second fiddle to Clarice Starling, because we love Clarice, and we love the relationship between uh, her and Hannibal Lecter, of course. That's you know where the, the core attraction, I think, is. Um, and I don't want to say he wasn't portrayed accurately in the movies. Like, he he got a shot in Red Dragon, um, directed by Brett Ratner. Uh, and, of course, in Michael Mann's brilliant movie, Manhunter. Um, but I, as good as, uh, he was portrayed in, uh, Manhunter, and as good as he was in Red Dragon, it's just that I don't think they got him, uh, quite the way he should have been, like, the whole aspect of him, he's a neurotic character, and he is tortured because he has this gift of getting into the mindset of a serial killer. And the way they kind of portray that in, in the two different adaptations of Red Dragon is he, like, kind of, like, just talks to himself, and he's like, oh, that's what you're gonna do, yeah, get him, tiger, and stuff like that. And it's good. It is good for what it is in the movies, and I understand that movies have certain time restrictions. That's what's good about TV, and how TV's kind of evolving to, you know, adapt things, like I was talking about Game of Thrones in another video. Uh, same deal here. They have more time, more breathing room. Literally within, like, the first ten minutes of the, the opening episode of Hannibal, we get a real sense of how Will Graham's mind works, which I thought was really well done. Like, because you actually see, you do literally see him in the position of the killer. 
in his mind. And it does this kind of swoon, swoon thing, and it's, it's kind of cheesy that way, but uh, bottom line is it gets it done really well. He's a very interesting character, played wonderfully by, by Hugh Dancy. I thought he does a, a, a great job um, with playing the character, kind of like uh, he, he keeps his distance from everybody else, so he's very uh, interesting to have as the lead character, which I think kind of plays off uh, Mads Mikkelsen uh, when he's playing Hannibal and their dynamic because uh, he's more... I don't want to say open and friendly, but he's a more accessible person. Um, and Mads Mikkelsen, he's a great Lecter. Um, it takes a while. If if you're as used to the Hannibal Lecter movies um, as you may be, uh, like I definitely am, I, I love those movies. Um, y you have to set aside everything you know about uh, Anthony Hopkins' portrayal, um, because it's a completely different thing. Uh, you have to just take away this kabuki uh, British uh, I'm gonna get ya <laughs> kind of thing uh, that he does um, which is excellent the way uh, Hopkins does it as a lector and it's iconic and you know won him an Oscar so nothing against that but I think they knew with this show and what uh, Mickelson knew as an actor is that he couldn't mm, replicate that and he shouldn't try to, uh, so he makes Hannibal his own thing, and it is still the character that we know, still the same uh, enigmatic and seductive and kind of just sort of evil, but so good at being evil that we know why he's being evil and almost root for him and agree with him, uh, that he, he does it so well, and it's a more reserved performance, um, almost just so necessarily kind of like stale um, in the way that he does it, so matter-of-fact about everything that he says that he's not, you know, being this overly dramatic, overly chewing the scenery kind of evil madman. He might turn into that later when he's in the cell for a little bit, but here he is in his element, um, here he's in normal life and how he functions, and I thought that was it's done very well. Um, and again, I, I love the dynamic. Um, there's a good supporting cast, too, sp specifically with, with Lawrence Fishburne. Um, who's great uh, playing Jack Crawford. Um, and you get to know him a little bit more. He's always just this necessary key component to the plot when you see him in, in uh, uh, played by Dennis Farina in, in uh, Manhunter, and Harvey Cattell in uh, Red Dragon, and uh, even Scott Glenn uh, in Silence of the Lambs, so it's not like the Will Graham aspect, but same same difference. He's He's there, he's present, he does his job, but he's not a fully dimensioned character, which I think Lawrence Fishburne gets accomplished uh, by the writing, um, you know, we, we get a sense of like a, a domestic uh, unbliss uh, with his character, which is nice. Um, and the thing is, what, what I like about the character and how Lawrence Fishburne plays him is that he seems almost so uh, warm and like you want to trust the guy and, and you tr you just like him and he knows what he's doing and you you just you know want to go with it with him but then all of a sudden almost randomly he'll have these horrible like outbursts like, get out of the room and stuff like that and so he's like he, he is the father figure that I think he kind of is made out to be in the novels but at the same time you're kind of scared of him uh, and, and the way that he he acts when he he's just kind of threatening. He's well, not threatening, but you know what I mean. Like he's intimidating. That's the word I'm looking for. So I think he plays that very well, um, and I'm very interested in seeing how his character moves forward. Um, and all in all, it's a great show. Um, it is a network television show, so it's not too heavy on the violence, which you know may be contradictory, because. It, it, the whole the whole point of the sh the novels is that there is violence, there's horrible murders, but you know when you think about it, you could air Silence of the Lambs on network television, save for a few key scenes, you wouldn't have to to cut anything out. That's how much it has changed really in the last twenty years. So they can get away with a lot more. Um, you know, it's I I don't think they're like too restrictive on what they're showing. I mean, look at any CSI show, uh, look at any uh, Law and Order show, and the violence that they they depict, um, it's, it's pretty brutal, and, you know, you'll always, uh, notice that, uh, 
they they don't seem like they're holding back. And I think if they were on a network like HBO, where they had the freedom to be as gruesome as they want, as obscene as they want, um, I think it would be a failure for the show because they're showing just enough, which I think really is in tune with the psychological aspects of the violence that we're seeing. Um, and if they just went overboard on it, it would it would ruin what it's set out setting out to do, basically. Kind of like that's kind of where the the actual movie Hannibal, the Ridley Scott film, I think that's where it, it failed because, you know, seeing the end result in Silence of the Lambs of the 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 officer uh, Pembry, I think his name. Oh God, I remember his name. Um, his guts hanging out and he's crucified. Um, you see it, but you don't see it too clearly. Compare that to. Uh, Ray Liotta in Hannibal, you see his f brain hanging out and he's sticking a fork in there, ks, putting it on the grill. It's too much, and you don't want to see that much. I, at least I don't think so. Maybe you do. I don't know. At least not something like this. I don't know. If it's a kind of a more psychological cop drama, I, I think they've hit all the right notes with this show. And maybe, you know, when it comes to DVD, and I'd, I'd love to purchase it on DVD or Blu-ray, maybe they'll come out with like a uncut versions, which would be interesting to see, because I don't think they do that too much with TV. You see it all the time in movies, like unrated edition, blah, 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 but not too much with TV, so I will definitely buy it. It's an excellent show. Um, I'm really, really curious to see where it goes towards to the end of the season um, and where they're going to keep going with it, and that's provided it stays on the air. I know the ratings aren't great. Um, networks tend, especially on basic cable where it's just so disposable um, if it's not like the number one show then boom they cancel it I, I really sincerely hope they don't cancel Hannibal because it has a lot of potential so that's kinda why you know I wanna talk about it on on, on, the, on my uh, channel which gets like 800 bajillion views um, not really but you know I, I want people to talk about it I hope people are watching it uh, I wanna get the word out on it it's a fantastic show um, yeah, so tune in. Hannibal, Thursday nights, NBC, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Check your local listings. So, thanks for watching.